Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another fundamental analysis video. Today, guys, I would actually like to cover a company that actually has earnings this week. Now, I know we usually do the wheel, but for today, for Monday, I figured, you know what, let's do this company because I've never done it, and I've actually been interested in it for quite some time. So I would like to cover none other than the company Syntas uh, Uniforms. So as you guys just saw, they do have earnings on, we can see over here on Wednesday, pre-market. And I do like this company. And today I'm going to give you the reason as to why we're going to take a look at their fundamentals. We're going to take a look at the overall grade and then use this kind of forecast to see whether or not this company is a good buy right now. So with that said, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well as well. Make sure to follow us on XF Fellow Investigate. If you like to join us on the Discord, the link is in the description below. So with that said, guys, let's get started with this analysis. So first things first is covering what in the world this thing actually does. And there's a reason why I like it. Looking at the company profile, guys, well, this is one of the reasons why I like it, the simplicity of it. Since as corporations engages in the provisions of corporate identity uniforms and related business services primarily in the United States, Canada, and Latin America, it operates through uniform rental and facility services, first aid services, and all other segments. Basically, guys, um, they let you rent and service uniforms for companies. I know this because I know of a lot of companies and even, even like, like single owned or like or like family owned businesses it doesn't have to be major corporations small businesses use them as well and that's kind of the reason why i like it it's also the, one of the reasons why i just like simple companies to begin with companies like domino's pizza you know that kind of stuff is because it's simple it's simple and simplicity waste management right simplicity is what i like when it comes to investing because well it just um there's no surprise, right? There's absolutely little to no surprises when it comes to what in the world they do. So that's one of the reasons why I do like them. And that pretty much sums it all up. What I just read right there, they provide mainly uniforms to big businesses and even small businesses as well. Now let us look into, of course, their overall earnings because well, the earnings are coming up, but let's take a look at what they did before. On July 18th, guys, their EPS normalized actual came in at a dollar, beat by five cents. EPS gap actual also a dollar, beats by five cents, and a revenue of 2.47 billion that was beat by 1.58 million dollars. Now, for this upcoming earnings on the 25th, we got over here a dollar for both the EPS normalized and the EPS gap. And when it comes to the revenue, $2.49 billion and well, nine revisions, seven of them to the upside, two of them to the downside. It's already looking interesting. It's, it's getting ready set up to really outperform very, very nicely. So I do like these kinds of numbers, but again, a lot can happen when the earnings actually do come out. They may crush earnings, but guidance may be really, really low. So with that, let's actually now jump into the calculator. We got the ticker for CTAS, market cap of $82.33 billion with a P. Whew, that P is massive. Still lower than that of AMD though. 53.92 with a current share price of $204.16. Looking at this graph, though, on the one year, they're up a... I mean, this graph looks insane. This graph nearly looks like a straight line going up and to the right. This is up 58.72%, guys. At the beginning of this year, they were $128. They were $128 at the beginning of this year. Absolutely crazy. Year to date, 35.51%, guys. Wow, what a company. 52-week range. Well, first of all, we are at the higher end of this 52 week range going from a low of 118 dollars and 69 cents to a whopping 209 dollars and 12 cents wait until what you guys see what the calculator says in regards to the just kind of free cash flow part of it because wow just just simply wow so we are on the higher end of this is unfortunate but doesn't mean that it's not a buy necessarily we can see that they do pay out a dividend of a dollar 56 which is a yield of 0.76. So it's a really, really tiny yield. Unfortunately, it's a really, really tiny yield. A pair ratio of 35.67, which is really good. Oh, oh man. A five-year CAGR of 22.3%, guys. 22.3%. I I mean, I, I get that the yield is low, but with a CAGR that big, whoo, whoo, just whoo. Two years of consecutive dividend payments. And if we take a look at this dividend history, we can see what in the world. Oh, 
Okay, that's a little bit strange right there. That what in the world is happened? <laughs> that was a little bit okay. For some reason, that is like that. I okay. That's that's a major glitch right there when it comes to seeking alpha. But you guys can see that they basically just stopped issuing that dividend. Um. Oh wow. Wait a minute. They used to do it. Interesting. So they used to do it once a year, and then they started doing it once per quarter. Wow. Look at this. This is actually really really interesting. But that's the reason why they cut it, guys, because before they just did it once a year annually. And then beginning of 2021, they started doing quarterly, which is why it went from 70 cents down to 24 cents. So in reality, it really didn't change the dividend yield, right? Or, or at least it's not that it didn't change the, the dividend yield. It's just that the dividend growth, it says two years. In reality, it has been a lot more. This is before they used to do it once a year. Now they do it quarterly. So I don't really see that much of a big deal. X dividend date is actually, sorry, pass as of August 15th. Pale date was on September 3rd, and they do pay their dividends quarterly now. So if we take a look at back over here, we can see that based off of the current shares so standing and this dollar fifty six, they pay out $632 million in dividends every single year. And if we take a look at their 10-year average free cash, so subtract this $632 million, they're left with $272.16 million, and take their last year's free cash, so do the exact same math, that's a massive jump 1.04 billion dollars guys that is that is an absolutely massive jump love it these payout ratios are great 37.83 percent for the last year's free cash flow and 69.89 for the 10 year average but that's in the 10 year honestly don't really see it as that big of a deal it's looking like a great great you know payout ratio and dividend safety in my personal opinion now when it comes to the actual fundamentals starting with the net income guys this looks absolutely crazy we got 10 years ago 430.6 million dollars to one year ago of 1.57 billion dollars increase of 265 percent you know aside from a few moments here and there um this has been like i really do like this right they had a dip eight years ago and a small dip six to five years ago all in all 95 percent. it's a really really good net income and the free cash flow looks very very similar we got 10 years ago of 363 million to one year ago of 1.67 billion increase of 361 percent with an average of 903.96 that's essentially 904 million dollars again a few dips here and there you can see three to two years ago went down probably because of interest rates that's no longer an issue and um you know as of today there are that, that, that's a pretty big jump and the only other time was 10 to 9 years ago all in all though 90 percent it really is it's really good and the revenue continues with this trend we got over here 10 years ago of 4.4 billion dollars to one year ago of 9.6 billion dollars increase of 119.62 percent and um I mean, this is all consistently going up. You can see that five and four years ago kind of remained the same. COVID related, I would think. But all in all, though, it's nicely increasing. Easy, 95%. Not, not 100 because, yeah, the increase from five to four years ago wasn't as much. Honestly, if you give it 100, it's perfectly understandable too. 95% though, really, really solid. And here we can see the assets as a reference only nicely increasing. And the liabilities are actually doing something really interesting in that they're really not increasing as of the six year ago mark. Yes, they are, but like not really. So six years ago is what? 4.43 billion dollars in liabilities. And right now it's 4.85. So yes, it is an increase, but man, only by what? A little bit less than 500 million dollars in the past six years that's not a lot guys so i do see this as a really really good thing and the assets minus the liabilities okay they've had a few instances here of it slightly going down but all in all it's really looking solid as you guys can see average total assets of 7.32 billion dollars liabilities of 4.15 billion and a difference of 3.2 billion dollars in assets minus liabilities guys i'm giving this an 85 percent I really do like it. And in fact, I may even say a 90. Now that I'm looking at this again. Yeah, I think I might go with a 90% on this one. Really, really good. Cash flow minus the liabilities. Okay, so liabilities are kind of staying the same. They're increasing a little bit. The cash flow is nicely increasing. And we can see here that this is kind of just stagnating. Yes, there are instances of it slightly going up. You guys can see from three to one year ago. And even from six to four years ago. But I'm going to give it overall not like a perfect grade but it is looking really really good you guys can see as of one year ago they're at negative 3.2 billion dollars with the average of negative 
3.2 billion dollars so they're right there at the average that's what i'm going to give this an 85 percent and when looking at the shares outstanding we got over here 10 years ago of 446.8 million shares milling with an m to today of 405 million shares a buyback of 9.36 percent previous year to the current year it's a buyback of a little bit less than half of a percent guys we can see that they increase shares sometimes but the overall trend is to go down and the one times where they did issue shares were essentially during COVID and then something here uh, seven years ago. So I look at this and I'm like, it's not looking too bad. I'm going to give this, actually it's looking perfect. I'm going to give this guys 100%. I really do like this a lot. And lastly, when it comes into the cash cocoons, we got $342 million today and on the average $227.15 million and i just took all of you through all of those numbers not really surprising that the average grade for this it is a 93 percent i love this company i really really do simplistic 93 percent. the fundamentals are amazing nice dividend perfectly affordable now my problem is the amount you're going to pay for this because this is a whoo all time or near all time or at least not all time but near 52 week high let's see what the discount free cash flow says but when it comes to a fundamental, it is absolutely perfect. Alrighty, so now into the discounted free cash flow. Right off the bat, not inputting anything, we got $88.12, not adjusting for debt, and adjusting for debt, $83.22. So there really isn't that much difference there, only by around like, what, five bucks or so. All in all, though, let's uh, input some of these numbers. We got the revenue in the past 10 years on average, every single year, they've done around 9.22%. So let's say something along the lines of like 9% for the lowest assumption, 12% for the median, and let's say 15% for the highest assumption. You guys can see these numbers are already kind of uh, kind of crazy, right? Now, when it comes into the projected share buyback, they have done around 1%. They issue sometimes, so I'm going to say the average of negative 1, 0, and 1% for the low, median, and high assumption. Negative just means that they're going to issue. And when it comes to the required rate of return, it's a uniform company. I don't expect them to grow that much. Um, so I'm just going to say, guys, I'm just going to say match the market. Maybe even, yeah, I'm going to say match the market at 10%. And uh, this is the problem that I have with this right here. Um, yeah, we got $57.58 to well, $113, and then adjusting for debt, we got $53.15 to $107.50. Margin of safety of $5.15, $45.18 to $102.12. So if you guys remember, on the 52-week range, the 52-week global is $118. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I really wish I would have caught this during that 52-week low of $118, maybe even $120. I probably would have started buying at around $120, uh, personally for me. But with that massive PE, and I see this, I'm just like, ah, uh, man, it really, I would want it to come down a little bit, maybe even to like $180. But for this price right now at $204, I just don't see it, man. I just don't see it. It's a great company. Don't get me wrong. And I would like it to fall because it's a great company because I would love to buy it some more. But the way it stands, based off of my assumptions, it's not really worth it. But again, my assumptions, guys, please make your own decision for yourselves. It's not financial advice and every investment is the present value of all future cash. Well, like I say in every single video, this is not financial advice. And these numbers that you're seeing right here, right? These are not the numbers that say the stock is going to this. No, this is basically telling me what the company should be valued at it could fall there it may not fall there i don't know um i can't control markets but if it does begin to take a deep dive then well this these are some numbers that you can kind of gauge as to like be like okay now it's looking like it'll, it'll give you a reference right it'll give you a reference so let's understand that these these numbers will change based off of your own assumptions that's why i give these calculators out for free it's mainly the five-year one so please use it it's available for free um yeah all in all, though, for me, it's looking a little bit expensive. And of course, when it comes to this dividend, putting in $6,215, this nets you basically 50 bucks a year. Yeah, it's not that big. But okay, it's not that big, but the CAGR is massive and the fundamentals are really good. So there you go. Not the best dividend for income, but it's, it has the potential to, to increase a lot in the next five years. So all in all, when it comes to Syntas, there's a reason why I like this company to begin with. I know a coworker of mine, he's like, oh, I, I, I bought Syntas. Well, so hopefully he sees this video and hopefully this helps him out a little bit to see if, if maybe he wants to buy more or not. But for me, unless I see like 
Unless I see it falls with maybe like 180, I'm probably not going to dip my toe in it anytime soon. But that's just my personal opinion. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well as well. Make sure to follow us on XFL Investing. And if you want to join us on the Discord, the link is in the description below. So with that said, guys, peace out. And we'll see you all next time.